Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is the Three Up, Three Down, where we're covering the hot and cold comic book market trends for the week. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to Simple Man's Comics family. We have experienced exponential growth over the past few weeks, the past month or so. Wouldn't you say, Jack? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, just we felt truly blessed to see uh, these numbers take some of the spikes that they've taken of late. Yeah, so we've seen a huge increase in subscribers, and that means a lot to us. We're all about integrity and community on here, so we're glad to grow that community. We thank you for watching our content, and with that being said, we're going to get into the three up, three down for the week. Starting with the up portion, and we are going with Sabine Wren. A lot of people might not know who this is, but anyone that's a Star Wars fan damn sure knows who she is, especially if they've been watching that Star Wars Rebels animated cartoon, right, Jack? That's right. And this is probably one of the most polarizing topics in comics right now. Um, this has been something that I've watched from the outside. And let me tell you something. It's why I'm really glad to have stepped outside the bubble of comic book speculation, Brian, because this one has been messy. And this is what happens with comic book speculation. Comic book speculation can be a great thing, but it can also um, start causing tension and drama within the marketplace. So this character has popped off as people have made a natural speculation, what all of us do with comic books, right? So we see the casting uh, of... Um, Ahsoka. The, yeah, of Ahsoka and the Mandalorian. Uh, what's the actress? I'm drawing a blank on that. Rosario Dawson? Yeah, let me start that. So we see the the casting of Ahsoka Tora with... Uh, Toga Tora, right? Tano. Tano. Um, so we see the casting of Ahsoka with Rosario Dawson. Rosario Dawson in The Mandalorian. It's been a day. We'll yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> so we see Rosario Dawson's casting uh, in The Mandalorian, and people start kind of making that natural progression that we've seen Ahsoka with uh, Sabine Wren in, in, uh, within the comics, within the Rebels. Uh, television series and so it's kind of a natural speculation that we're going to see her at some point in live action especially if the rumors are true that rosario dawson is really just being groomed to have her own series on disney plus um so that is is cool that's all well and good i think so you think that could be who sasha banks plays it, that was my first thought that was my initial first thought is we have sasha banks who maybe the mass public isn't familiar with, but you and I are very familiar as wrestling fans. Um, is she's cast in some role in the series that was said to be significant. And I think she being known for her multicolored hair would certainly uh, be very natural um, as Sabine. Now here's where this thing has gotten messy within the comic book community. Uh, there was a key collector alert, key collector um, put out an alert saying, that issue number one of uh, Kanan was the first appearance was really a cameo. And that issue number six uh, is the first is the first full appearance. I, I didn't really know anything about issue six, but I didn't really think anything of it. Um, and then I started to notice more and more people were not liking kind of that assessment of, of the first appearance. And when I noticed the Comic Book Invest CBSI Hot Ten list. Ben Stein had kind of one of his uh, trademark snarky responses when he listed the book number six in the hot 10 as he's selling for about $25 now. And this was a dollar bin book. And I had to do a little investigating myself. So what I did was I ended up reading both issues. And since then, we've seen Instagram posts from members of the community who have accused Key Collector and I'll say the YouTuber Comic Tom maybe unfairly, um, at least in this situation. Uh, it, it, it really, this truly looks like a debate between first appearances. Now, you guys all know if you've been watching the channel where I sit in the first appearances, but if, like Brian said, we've seen exponential growth if you're new to the channel. I believe a first appearance is a first appearance. The first time a character shows up, that's a first appearance. Um, in Kanan 1, we see her for one panel, she does speak. In Kanan 6, we see her for three or four panels, and she does speak, I think, twice. So 
it's really a debate about how prolific of an appearance is a first appearance. And Nick from Key Collector, I don't agree with his opinion at all, but I respect his opinion because I have mine and I have to respect somebody else's. His, his opinion is on the brevity of an appearance, that he believes that a first appearance needs more than what the cameo is. I don't like that because then it's not a clear defined uh, explanation. So either way, because of the, the app and the popularity of the app, number six has become a popular book. Number one has still been extremely popular with that one in 25 variant now selling for about $50, where it was previously about a $15 book. So either way, the non-political thing to do is look out all, you know, we can't hit bins like we used to, right, with what's going on, but look all over online where you can find those issue ones or issue six is cheap if Sabine Wren is a character that you really are interested in and believe in that speculation. Yeah, we've been talking for a while now how hot Star Wars books are getting. It seems like we're talking yeah. about them a lot weekly now on this, on this video. Yeah, and that's what's most important about this story is that, again, this is another Star Wars book that has driven people to uh, uh, craze and to buy books. Then the next one we're talking for the three up portion this week is Corona. Now, when we first got this list, I said, Jack, we've been talking about this virus and the impacts for a while. He said, we're not talking about the virus. We're talking about a comic book character. Right. Said, we're talking. Oh. Spe yeah. <laughs> Spectacular Spider-Man 176. Um, and this piggybacks off our last discussion. This is another one where I think Key Collector has, has gotten a bad rap with this one because this book has been popularized really through a key collector alert, but they were only reporting what they were seeing in the market anyway, which is a spike in this book due to a unique coincidence, right? Here we have a villain, Corona, who spreads a virus. So it's just one of those unique tongue-in-cheek things that kind of happens from time to time in common. But because of social media now, more people can be aware of this than ever before in this book has spiked up to $25. Um, this is not a book that wouldn't have been popular years ago. These kind of like niche, kind of tongue in cheek, popular for the moment type books um, do find their, their way into the, the secondary marketplace. But for this book to be trading for $25 uh, really is the testament to social media. And the fact that again, with a slow news cycle, we're not getting, the regular spikes in books that we're used to seeing and, and people are grasping for straws for books to grab. So this is an interesting one. I'm sure these are sitting in bins everywhere. By the time we can get to bins, will this still be a popular book? Let us know in the comment section what you think. So yeah, no doubt Corona belongs on the hot list because it's being talked about and a lot of people out there buying up quantity of these issues because of the, the alerts or the news buzz. But all I can say is buyer beware because stuff like that, especially with the news cycle that's going on right now, someone hunting a character that has a similar name, those are usually bode well, especially if you're paying inflated prices for it. But with that, we're going to move on to the last one, the three up portion. And we're talking about Omega Red. That's right. We've talked about Omega Red on the hot list before, but it's still staying hot right now, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. And this is the biggest thing, Brian, uh, you know, with everything going on with the real Corona, uh, you know, we've seen natural market downturns on a lot of key issues. And there's a lot of books that were previously slated for movie and television speculation that because of the pushbacks to these start dates have really started to drop in value. And that's to be expected and really nothing to be overly concerned about. But for whatever reason, Omega Red is not seeing this slowdown. Now, Omega Red appeared on the upside of this list just recently in the last few weeks. Um, but this is a character that with every reason to see a downturn with the unknown uh, Captain America Falcon release date where Omega Red is said to be a villain to the fact that we don't even know if that's a, a firm fact at this point. But nonetheless, this character is seeing strong sales. Now, everyone knows about X-Men 4, but what gives you a, a real idea the popularity of this character right now is the fact that X-Men 5 is seeing sales upwards of $20. X-Men 5 being the second appearance that maybe some will start to argue first full. Again, I hate those first appearances because those arguments can 
come in because of Cameo, first of all, and how the market ends up getting with that. But X-Men 4, for a long time, has been that kind of viewed first appearance. X-Men 5 is starting to get popularity, and now we're seeing the whole story run, 6 and 7. You guys know I love sets. I talk constantly about adding those extra books in a lot of times can set your listing apart, especially if you're out there trying to sell on eBay. Well, that Omega Red run of five, six, seven, uh, and I believe, uh, or four, five, six, and seven, it is doing extremely well, upwards of $50 for the four issues. So you're maximizing your ROI in that way. And the, the sheer volume we're seeing right now is is what really drives home the point. The fact that Omega Red and that that the first appearance in that X Men run, that Jim Lee run from the early nineties, we all know what the print runs of those books are, but it has not mattered. That book has sold consistently, and that book has sold in massive numbers. Whether it's graded, raw, in lots, in sets, in runs, it has not mattered. So there it is. That's the three up portion. Real quick, let us know in the comments what do you guys think of the three up. What do you guys think's hot right now? And we're gonna rotate right on over into the three down, starting with Duke Thomas. Now, this is a character from Batman. This is one of Scott Snyder's beloved characters, right? There was a lot of buzz. We thought there was going to be a lot of uh, upper momentum with him. We didn't quite see it, but no doubt this is down. But I'm still a Duke Thomas fan, and if I could find those books cheap right now, especially what, Batman 21, the variant, the jock variant, I'm picking those up. But why is this cold, Jack? Well, I think it's just the fact that we haven't seen Duke Thomas used in the stories. That would be the why of it. Um, the the kind of where we're at assessment of it uh, is you're looking at a book that a recent auction, a 99 cent auction of uh, Batman 21 recently went unsold. So that means that no buyer in the course of a week after looking at it, and I looked at the feedback of this this seller, that we didn't have feedback issues. No one wanted to pay the five ninety nine dollars shipping um, for, for, for tax. tax. Yeah, it, it, the point is when you add that into the $0.99, cents, it was deemed too expensive for anyone to make that purchase. This has truly become a $5 book or, or slightly less, which is amazing because when we look at – and it's also why – Brian, maybe you and I are a little more cautionary when these punchline things happen because, and, and, and I also want to explain that because I think sometimes our audience thinks that we can be grumpy old men and be a little negative, but I think you and I have lived through characters like Duke Thomas where we all believed that this was going to be the next big thing. And just like punchline makes so much sense, Duke Thomas makes so much sense. Batman is the dark knight. He operates at night. Uh, and Duke Thomas evolved into the Signal, who was supposed to be the Batman by day, somebody who could guard Gotham City during the daylight with that yellow costume. Real cool, made sense. Um, a, a, a black superhero character, uh, you know, was exactly the kind of diversity that I know DC Comics wants right now. But for whatever the reason, it, it didn't follow through. The one bright spot I would say, Brian, is James Tinian was Scott Snyder's right-hand man. He's back on Batman. Maybe Duke Thomas comes back. I'm hopeful for that. Either way, these books are great buys. There's a combo pack version, a second print, uh, a uh, Comic-Con. Comic -Con. And then you mentioned the Jock variant. That's the one outlier. That book is drying up completely. There's only There's no sales in the last, like, 60 days. But there's only a few copies raw. People are asking for 60 to 80 bucks. Graded books are over 100. That book could one day be a very expensive book, whether Duke Thomas ever picks up or not, just because jock ratio variants, they just they have a popularity in the marketplace. All right, then the next one we're talking about on the down portion is G.I. Joe. Now, we were hot on these, especially with the start of that whole Snake Eyes run, talking about those covers, uh, including the 1 in 10, and even the um, action figure type brands that didn't really look like action figures, but G.I. Joe's kind of been down right now, but we're getting to the end of that story arc. It's still a fantastic story if you haven't been reading it. And I think there's some more trend because we just saw now, I've been watching it on Tubi, T-U-B-I, that app on Fire Stick, free, but they also just put it uh, up on YouTube for free, right, Jack? Yeah, Hasbro put the animated series up on YouTube. Um, it's been great. I've, I've, I've been checking out some of the, the stuff on there. But really what this is mostly indicative of is 
just the Hollywood delay. So you're right about the most recent storyline from IDW. Um, but the Snake IDW guys movie, the IDW series hasn't really ever taken off to a, a, a serious reader level. Um, the back issue market had been doing extremely well, specifically the Marvel series. I would say the last time I got major buzz was the whole death of snake eyes, right? Right, right. The, but the Marvel, the Marvel books have been doing well of late because we had had significant movie news. Books like um, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, number 14, uh, number 22, and number 49. Books, that's the first appearances of Destro. Um, Duke and Roadblock, same book together in 22. And 49 being uh, Serpenter. These are classic G.I. Joe characters. Um, these are must have first appearances. They will play prominent roles in the upcoming movie universe. I've seen their first appearances going off on eBay for $5 or less. And some of them as low as two and $3 and some of them from the same seller where you can save on shipping. That's a pro tip. And it's one of those things where these prices will undoubtedly rebound, but without consistent news, without the, the alerts and messaging and posts on social media uh these books have taken a hit like a lot of things in the market maybe these more than others but as somebody who pays attention to this market a lot i had been a little bit discouraged at seeing some of the prices start to raise and now it's buying season again because you can go pick up some of these keys extremely cheap yeah like you said there's outliers i've been having that, that especially the, the one silent issue the renegar variant right Right. Had that on my watch list forever, hoping to catch it on a deal. But like you said, if you buy multiples on eBay, especially especially if you add them to cart, um, before you pay, make sure you hit that request a total so that they combine the shipping for you because yep. don't pay for every single one and pay for shipping three times or however many items you're buying from the same seller. Put them in your cart and then request a total invoice. Definitely save some money. But the last one we're going to talk about on that three down portion is New Mutants. Um, this is kind of, I even asked a while ago, especially on our Patreon discord, like, Hey, haven't seen much marketing for this. Isn't this supposed to be coming out? And then lo and behold, now we're in the situation that we're in. I was on Patreon discord today saying, Hey, this would be the perfect time for Disney to just release this on streaming. It's kind of like they can get out from under the, 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 whatever's laid over from Fox, just put it out there on streaming. Like they've been doing with some other movies, but new mutant books, Jack, why do you say they're down? Well, it's just what you're talking about, the delay with the movie. I think that they're not going to put movies on streaming. From the last we've heard, it seems like Marvel may be a little bit more happy with New Mutants with the last cut of the movie that they did, where they really changed the tone of it. Um, I think Marvel was happy with it. Um, we know that like some of the characters in New Mutants, you would think are going to be essential to where they want to go with the X-Men in the future. So this movie is very important. So I, I get what you're saying about like, let's throw this movie out and start over. But I, I think Marvel kind of can't, they need this to hit well. Um, I do think it would still work on video on demand. It's difficult because we don't know what the streaming numbers are for like bloodshot or birds of prey. We know that Bloodshot outsold Birds of Prey on most medium, but we don't know what these numbers are. So we don't know if these are super respectable numbers or not. So the test hasn't been there. Um, if you put it on your streaming service, like throwing it on Disney Plus, essentially you're giving it away for free. It's, it's tough. Companies haven't found ways to look at that IP yet. But either way, this is causing a natural dive. We're seeing a lot of people who are who are making speculation or in investment decisions during this uh period and that can be dangerous but it sometimes I, it can be necessary so we're, i saw things like uh a lot of five of the first demon bear go off for like four dollars a book i've seen uh that same book new mutants 18 sell for seven eight five in individual lots same thing i saw one dealer sell three at the same time, which is a cardinal sin because you're competing against yourself. Three at the exact same time. They all went off for about $4. You could have combined shipping. You could have gotten the three for less than $20. There's no doubt with Demon Bear as the main villain for this movie. When the world resumes, and it undoubtedly will resume, and we get back to business as usual, 
people are going to see this movie. And even the talk about the release of this movie is going to be enough to put those books back on the upside of this list. So I just think there's so many buying opportunities right now for New Mutants. I think the best, absolute best buying opportunities are 14 and 18. Demon Bear, short term, because that's the villain. That's You can buy it now and resell it once they start talking about releasing the movie. And if they release it on the streaming, that could be quicker than anticipated. And 14 is a good long term because I think Magic is a character that they can do a lot with. Yeah, I think it would be best to put it out on streaming. Now, I'm not saying Disney Plus, but do like they've been doing where they put it out there digital only yeah. for a month, month and a half, and then made me move it to Disney Plus. Only because I think one we talked about before, there wasn't much marketing. I, you didn't see much of it. There wasn't much TV mm-hmm. spots. They put a new trailer out recently. But it's still, this movie's been dragged through whatever for the past year and a half. The problem with putting it in the theater, when are you going to release it? Because whenever these theaters come back open, I think this movie's going to get caught up in the wash with all the other releases that are pending right now. So I think then, that's just me. I think it'd be better to go on digital put it on digital for sale and then eventually move to Disney plus and, and try to make whatever money you can. But either way, books are kind of down right now, but you did mention demon bear. One of our Patreon members said he's, he was, he still sold a couple copies of his. So they are selling, but that's the three down. And that is the three up three down for the week. Again, let us know in the comments, guys, what do you think's up? What do you think's down right now? It's a weird market right now with everything that's going on. Um, it's definitely going out in the mail. Cause I know a lot of places right now are pretty much what shelter in place, right? Some places are still open, but for a lot, it's it's mail or delivery. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and well, thing. and then we're seeing even daily changes to this, Brian, because now we've got um, a situation where it looks like almost the entire convention season is going to end up being canceled. So we're seeing more and more dealers who are convention dealers who are saying that they're happening to increase their eBay listings. So the back issue market is going to be the market to pay attention to in the coming months, but it's going to be weird. And there's so many outliers out there right now because competition is heavy. So pay attention to those auctions, guys, check out, make sure you have those saved listings. Make sure you're looking for dealers selling multiple books uh, of things you're looking for. There's a lot of ways to save some money right now. So that's right. You had mentioned back issues. Tomorrow night, we normally have our Bolo show, but actually with no new releases coming out right now, we're going to have the first back issue Bolo show, right? Well, we've had the back issue Bolo segments on the channel before those top fives in a specific category. But what we're doing here with this is I'm giving you a sneak peek into my Bolo buy list, the a kind of overall look at the books that I'm paying attention to on the secondary market. Now you're going to see this week's list is already out there. You may be saying, well, what about this book or what about that book? I'm sure we may get to it with future lists. This is just week one, but this week's list, give you the list, no context. And of course, we're going to talk about it right here on the channel. And that's where all the great context comes in. Looking for you guys to make your comments. If you like the plays, uh, what are you guys looking for? Um, and we know you'll be there to deliver for us. Right. And also, if you don't want to sit there and watch the video, head on over to simplemanscomics.com. We have an article up there with those in there for you as well. As well as you can click on the pictures, click on the links, and then it'll show you all the copies that sellers have available on eBay. So that being said, guys, this is three up, three down. We'll see you guys in the next video.